Why is it so bad in Cuba right now? Is it because of the pandemic? We've seen a lot of concern about access to medicine and food. Yeah, look, the reality is that the pandemic has uh, shown as individuals and as a society our vulnerabilities, our fragilities, and the Cuban political system and the Cuban macroeconomic system has a lot of those fragilities and, and, and vulnerabilities. And I think this is why there's protest. People not only want food, not only want vaccination, but you know what? They want the right to vote. They want the right to choose. Um, and these are the biggest protests and most substantive protests that, uh, that we've seen on the island since probably mid-90s, 1994. Could the government actually fall, given that this is a communist regime where they have, you know, sort of more resources to political power uh, than a more free market economy normally would? Um, but also, why don't you think that the U.S. response should necessarily include tougher sanctions? It's hard to say if this government's going to fall, this regime's going to fall. Um, but but there is movement, there is action, there is outrage. Um, and I think the U.S. has to listen to the Cuban people. I know people in South Florida certainly listen to the Cuban people. Um, there are midterms in the U.S. next year. Uh, Florida will be in the eye of, the, of those midterms. And, you know, um, it, is, uh, it is critical to see what happens next. Uh, I think the Cuban government looks weak. It looks vulnerable. Um, and I think as Latin America, as the United States, Canada and EU have to show its support. But when you say it's EU. weak and vulnerable, to whom exactly? If this regime were to hand over or have some sort of transition from power, I mean, what fills that vacuum? I think it's somewhat naive uh, to think that th this communist regime that's been in power since 1959 is all of a sudden going to disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, what one would hope for, just like what one would hope in Nicaragua, in Venezuela, is a transition to a more democratic uh, to a more egalitarian system than the one party, one uh, one system rule that there has been for sadly so long. I know you think that in a way U.S. soft power is the most valuable thing there, that by maybe lifting sanctions or at least not worsening them, that uh, you can kind of hope that that doesn't require the U.S. being blamed for some of the agitation in Cuba that we're already seeing play out. So again, with an eye towards the politics of this next year, is there anything the U.S. should do? It's somewhat unpopular amongst uh, Cuban Americans to say that sanctions need to be decreased or, or lifted. But the reality is we've had these types of sanctions now for almost six decades, and change hasn't occurred. Sanctions, diplomatic and economic sanctions, make life uncomfortable for these regimes, make, uh, create quite a bit of suffering within these countries. But the reality is they have uninspiring batting averages, uh, these sanctions. There's been sanctions without government change in North Korea, Cuba, Venezuela, um, uh, Syria, Iran. Maybe it's time to try something new. So finally then, sort of depending on how this plays out, where would you be looking to next? Is this the kind of uh, popular reaction that we could see in Venezuela and other Latin American countries? Again, given the strategic importance of Cuba historically, is there anything that we should be looking for on the Russia front, for instance? Right, well, I, it, undoubtedly, uh, Cuba is the intellectual and ideological architect of what has happened and the regimes that have developed in Nicaragua, in Venezuela. If we see slippage in Havana, if we see a weakening of that regime, then undoubtedly, um, both in Nicaragua and in Venezuela, they would follow. Uh, they would follow suit. Now we have to see what larger powers come in to try and hold up these uh, these regimes as they wither away. Will it be Russia? Will it be China? You know, the U.S. has to realize that we are not the only game in town in Latin America from a political and economic standpoint, and that there are others with vested interests in, in this region and in these countries for their raw materials, for their human talent. Um, we're not the only ones just looking at what's happening in Latin America at the moment. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.